As Halloween nears, officials are warning kids and parents alike that certain candies may be laced with a highly toxic drug. That comes after a suspect was seized at a major Southern California airport with thousands of pills. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and Drug Enforcement Agency seized about 12,000 suspected fentanyl pills on October 19th at the Los Angeles International Airport. The suspect attempted to smuggle the drug in several bags of candy and miscellaneous snacks. Mark Sherwood, a naturopathic doctor, said targeting children with fentanyl is a new trend. Fentanyl has been around for a long, long time um, and caused a lot of deaths of course, but this idea with targeting children with this color-coded Skittles uh, looking uh, candy that's really fentanyl and deadly is, is quite disturbing. When trick-or-treating, officials recommend staying in groups, going where it's well lit, walking on sidewalks, and inspecting the candy. Our kids get uh, dressed up and we go out with them and we supervise them as they collect all this candy. Uh, it's very important to inspect it um, to make sure that no uh, wrapper has been opened or altered or, or um, looks like it's been tampered with. So I encourage parents uh, to really inspect the candy. Sherwood added that under no circumstances should people eat candy that is unwrapped. One, the first thing to, and, and the most important thing to do, if you see it, say something. Tell a teacher, tell an administrator, tell their parents um, so that further action can be taken. So first and foremost, if you see something, if you suspect it, you got to say something. When you start targeting kids, you're targeting the next generation behind us, and that sort of hits the ire of any American soul. That is not okay. It's not okay to target anybody. But when you start targeting defenseless children like this, and that, that should not be acceptable under any circumstance. Sherwood warned parents not to hesitate to call 911 if they see a child become incapacitated after eating candy. In September, seven teenagers at a Southern California high school overdosed from pills believed to be laced with fentanyl. Convicted killer Scott Peterson is no longer on death row for the 2002 death of his wife and unborn child. He was removed from the notorious San Quentin State Prison in California and is now detained at a facility east of Sacramento. In August, attorneys argue whether or not Peterson deserves a new trial. Defense attorneys say that one of the jurors was biased and lied to become a juror for the trial. The jury then went on to convict Peterson in 2004 and sentenced him to death. The California Supreme Court overturned the death sentence in 2020. However, Peterson remained on death row at San Quentin until just recently. A judge is now deciding whether he can receive a new trial. As Californians wait for the state to release math and reading test scores, some scores from individual school districts offer a glimpse into score trends. NTD heard from a college student who is also running for his city council about what he thinks impacted student scores. Recently released test scores from some of California's largest school districts offered a preview of what's likely to be steep drops in reading and math scores statewide. One reason for the drop, according to a college student and candidate for the City of Hayward City Council, is online learning from pandemic lockdowns. And you could definitely see it even at the college level that a, a bunch of kids, when everything switched over to Zoom, weren't giving their full focus and full attention because they were on Zoom from home. And realistically, some students cheated uh, because they, they weren't under the direct supervision of a teacher. The California Department of Education delayed releasing this year's statewide 2022 Smarter Balanced Assessment results. The department recently announced the scores will be released by the end of October following media coverage. Those tests are given annually to 3rd through 8th graders and 11th graders to measure their progress in English language arts and math. But EdSource, an education-focused nonprofit, requested test score information from individual school districts. Overall, the results show sharp declines in all grade levels from 2019, before lockdowns forced the closure of most campuses until a return to in-person learning in 2022. I, I think education right now is, is just so focused on pass this test uh, and, and memorization, what it should be about a deeper understanding of concepts. Results for numerous school districts showed a low number of students meeting standards. 
13% of students in Bakersfield met the state standard for math. Math scores in Fresno dropped by a third. In 2022, 21% of students met the math standard. Reading scores in Long Beach dropped 11 points. And math scores fell by 4 points. Reading scores in Los Angeles Unified dipped slightly from 2019 to 2022. 41% of students in 2022 were proficient in reading. I think parents got a glimpse into what their kids were actually learning uh, with the, the whole Zoom thing, the Zoom learning. So that, that was kind of an awakening, I think, for parents. On the contrary, Lodi Unified saw scores in both math and reading improve from 2021, but the numbers still lagged significantly compared to 2019. Lima says that parents can bring change by showing up to board meetings. Go to your school board meetings and, and voice your concerns. Have your voices be heard. Uh, you, the, the people are the power in, in this country still. Heather Huff, director of policy analysis for California Education, told media outlet Visalia Times Delta that the preliminary results are actually better than she expected. Huff noted that some students performed well during remote learning, so she and others working in education are waiting for the state to release the full data. After nearly three decades, a car that was reported stolen in Northern California has been found buried in the yard of a $15 million mansion in Silicon Valley. Officials say that the mansion was built by a man with a history of arrests for murder, attempted murder, and insurance fraud. Last Thursday, landscapers in Atherton discovered a convertible Mercedes-Benz that was filled with bags of unused concrete. The car had been reported as stolen in nearby Palo Alto back in September 1992. Police believe the car was buried four to five feet deep in the backyard of the home sometime in the 1990s before the current owners bought the home. Cadaver dogs had alerted to possible human remains. However, technicians have not found any remains. Atherton Police Commander Daniel Larson said the owner of the car is believed to be deceased, but officials are waiting for official DMV records before confirming. The San Francisco Chronicle reported that the home was built by Johnny Liu, a man with a history of arrest for murder, attempted murder, and insurance fraud. Larson said that the current homeowners were not under investigation. According to a recent survey, supply chain issues are the primary challenge to United States manufacturers. The president of the association believes the causes of the issue of supply chain include labor union strike and shortage of labor. In a survey conducted by the National Association of Manufacturers, more than three-fourths of manufacturers listed supply chain issues as their primary business challenge. From March to September, manufacturer confidence in the economy fell from 88% to 76%. The association's president and CEO, Jay Timmons, said that in the next year, he expects a slowdown in inventory, nearly 8% growth in health insurance costs, and 3% increase in raw material costs. According to the association, 4 million manufacturing jobs need to be filled by the end of 2030. Timmons said the National Rail Workers Union strike and labor shortages led to supply chain issues. He added that the uncertainty of a National Rail Workers Union strike could wreak havoc on operations and logistics planning heading into the holiday season. Port of Los Angeles Executive Director Gene Soroka reported that the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach supply chain issues stem from labor unions. The ports are currently negotiating new contracts with the labor union with the goal of reducing shipping times. Though fewer containers are waiting at the ports, wait times are still long. The Port of Los Angeles reported a decrease in both imports and exports since last September. The eight-year-old could be the youngest to scale one of Yosemite's iconic rock formations, but he's not climbing alone since his dad will be with him for the entire adventure. Most excited to climb with Daddy. Eight-year-old Sam Baker from Colorado is set to be the youngest to climb El Capitan in California's Yosemite Park with his dad Joe. It will take about four days to scale the captain. They started their journey on Monday. Uh, basically, there's very few ledges, and so um, you know we're going to have to bring up portal ledges, which are like nylon cots that you hang on the side of the wall. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a big adventure, a big family adventure. In Joe's Facebook post, he said his son has wanted to climb the wall for two years. 
They will bring everything they need for the next few days, including hundreds of pounds of water. Joe says people talk about the danger, but he believes the rewards outweigh the risks. El Capitan's vertical rock formation stands about 3,000 feet tall, two and a half times as tall as the Empire State Building, or more than three times as high as the Eiffel Tower. It's a popular attraction among rock climbers. Earlier this month, Disney announced it's a 100-year anniversary platinum celebration. They will celebrate with new entertainment and events. The Disneyland Resort in California will feature Disney 100 Years of Wonder, a worldwide company celebration to honor the 100th year anniversary of the Walt Disney Company, starting on January 27, 2023. A new Walt Disney Studios logo honoring the anniversary was unveiled at the September D23 Expo, an event to introduce new developments for Disney. New entertainment, dining, and merchandise will also be coming to the parks in 2023. The company also announced new nighttime events at the Disneyland Resort. Platinum Silver will be the color scheme for the year. Sleeping Beauty's castle will be topped with a star and covered in platinum banners. The moat around the castle will also have two water fountains for the first time.